Hey everybody, it's Tim Larkin here to share more self-protection information with you. What is it that causes the big, biggest revelation when it comes to understanding the tool of violence? I'm going to share with you today one person's revelation that they got when they read my book. Yes, I'm going to do a book plug. When violence is the answer. Now, a lot of you guys already have it. I appreciate it. Um, we'll put a link in. You get an Amazon, Kindle. You can hear me on audiobook. All great. Um, but what is so great is I'm a little bit late to the social media game. I kind of avoided it for a long time. And since doing it, you get to meet people that you'd never meet. And uh, this guy, Tyler Hickson, has a podcast called Strangers Worth Meeting. It was really cool. And he shared on one of his uh, interviews that he was doing with somebody else, just the concept that he got out of my book. And then he contacted me and we decided to do an interview. And during the interview, we talked about this idea of understanding what you need to respond to and what you don't need to respond to. And he does it in a very unique way. And then he asked me a little bit about my background and how you know, I started to understand the concept. And I share a little bit about my background. So I think you'll find it really interesting. I'm not going to be in the clip like I normally am talking about it. I'm just going to let the clip play. And then we'll close out with some comments. Here we go. It, it's really strange that like the people that I know that understand the subject best, who are not criminals, obviously, right. um, they, they tend to be the calmest people. They tend to be really friendly um, and they enjoy life because until there's a need for that information, it doesn't have to possess you. And um, I think that's probably one of the, the better things that I've been able to provide people is um, a lot of the unnecessary worry goes away because they truly understand, okay, this is what I have to be concerned about. This I don't have to be concerned about. And when you have that clarity, it's easier to navigate life. Yeah, you're entirely right. And I think, I mean, I, I feel that the, the biggest lessons of the book are really way more in about squashing your own personal ego and your own issues down yeah. uh, and learning how to manage yourself. And then also just like being a really kind person generally, because you because because the one thing I took was, regardless of whether it's violence or not, I don't know what that other person across from me is dealing with. I don't know what's going on in their day. And I, I think about that so often, like how many times do I am I going to the store and I'm in a fight with my wife and I'm furious and I'm in just a terrible mood and then someone's going to not be kind and, 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 you know, try to trigger me in some way. And I feel like because I have experienced that side of it, I know. I don't know what that person has going on right now. Um, and, and that was, that was such a key thing in some of those stories. The, the one story that I've brought up on so many podcasts is the one of the, um, the Muay Thai fighter. And I, I've gotten this wrong on previous podcasts. I thought he was a boxer, but I, I had reread recently and he's a Muay Thai fighter who, um, has his car, uh, run into, and he goes to confront the guy in traffic and gets shot. Yeah. And I think that, uh, it's, it's something we don't consider a lot. I think, um, when I first thought about <clears throat> violence or self-defense or fighting, it was all about, uh, we are all playing by the same rule book. And then you introduced me to the idea that there's, there's two rule books. Uh, and on the one hand, you've got social aggression and the other, you've got a social violence. And that understanding alone does exactly what you're describing, which is because I know those two things exist. I walk into a situation. I, I can figure out which one I'm dealing with and I should deal with them in, in different ways. Um, I, I think that's a phenomenal aspect of it. And I wonder how, how did that start to come together for you? The understanding that there was that clear division between those two things. Um, <clears throat> you know, I grew up, I, I want to say I grew up, um, I didn't have a violent upbringing, um, but I was brought up to be very comfortable with the idea of violence. You know, I, I'm from Boston originally. My grandfather's Irish. Uh, my family is, you know, the majority of the family's Irish. And, um, you know, fighting was something that, that we learned, you know, boxing was one of the first things I learned. I mean, when I was four years old, I remember getting Everlast boxing gloves from my grandfather. And um, we were always taught that, listen, you never look for a fight, but, you know, you also never back down. And, and, and you were given these kind of what you're talking about, this idea that there are these rules. The only caveat that my grandfather, you know, did was he trained us in a little ring down in his basement. <clears throat> But then he'd point out to uh, the window of the uh, of the in, at, of the basement, you know, and you'd look out onto the street and you'd say, you know, hey boys, but if anybody touches you out here, here's what you do. And he basically showed us injury to the human body. So that's exactly what I want people to get. I want them to understand the difference. 
You know, uh, I really, you know, the fact that, that just from him reading my book got that and he trains and he trains in jujitsu, he does some other stuff. Um, but it was a real revelation to him. And actually it, it helps calm you down when you understand what you have to respond to and what you don't have to respond to. I know this is an ongoing theme, you know, that, that I put out here, but I, I'll tell you the reason it's an ongoing theme is because I see it to be as the biggest problem most sane socialized people have when it comes to self-protection is they just don't understand what they have to respond to. And oftentimes they respond to things that just get them killed. He referenced a story that I will be doing a podcast about more elaborately on later about uh, the tragedy of Alex Gong, uh, a Muay Thai fighter who was uh, killed years ago. Uh, geez, almost 20 years ago now um, in San Francisco. And it's a good, it's a good lesson for us to learn from. And I will, I will go more elaborately on that. Uh, he gave you kind of a thumbnail sketch on it. But really what I want you guys to understand is that, uh, you know, it's a holistic approach to things. There's the physical part of training. And then there's, when would I ever use this information? And I find that very few people really go on that side of things and really do the work on, you know, the mental side and say, when would I ever really use violence? And when would it be okay for me to use violence? And when would I be okay with it? Um, I've seen people respond to situations and they acted heroically and they've performed well, but they really couldn't deal with the aftermath, what they had to do to the other person to survive. They just, they had never gone through those steps. They had never really trained their mind to think about these subjects. That's why getting a book, I know this looks like I'm doing the big plug, but seriously, understanding that will keep you out of so many problems. And the other side is when you have to use a tool of violence, you know, you'll have a much better understanding and you'll be able to process it much better if you've done the work ahead of time. So I would strongly encourage you to listen, you know, there's a lot of things you can listen to, uh, you know, not besides my book, but my book specifically deals with that subject. So uh, you might, you might want to check it out if you don't have it. Again, thank you guys for all the support. This channel is growing really fast. Please keep sending in your comments. And also, please keep letting us know what type of subjects you'd like me to cover in the future. Um, I really enjoy making these videos. And you guys have been giving me tremendous feedback. So all the best.